Phosphor and probably some other things that will be talked about in the very near future. So uh, uh, today we're going to talk about just general, like you know, background of uh, where we've been so far with PowerShell-based user interfaces. Uh, we're going to talk about what Phosphor is and also the motivations behind making it, why are we making it, um, also how it works, and uh, where we think it'll go next, since there's you know, some, a lot of possibilities for what this could be used for, and also how you guys can get involved in the development. So showing UI from within PowerShell is not a new thing. Um, how many people here have actually written any kind of UI from PowerShell? So a lot of people. Uh, are you generally happy writing UI code in PowerShell? No. Yeah, okay. So uh, generally people are using like WPF or WinForms to make UI and um, it, PowerShell, it, I guess WPF and WinForms are really made for like C Sharp. Uh, PowerShell is not necessarily great for those things, even though it does work and people have been very successful in making like full user interfaces with uh, WPF and WinForms within PowerShell. But uh, it doesn't really feel good, I guess. Um, and also, there's a lot of stuff there that is a lot of manual coding effort that really shouldn't be necessary. I mean, there's a lot of things that we should be able to do from PowerShell that feels more like PowerShell. Um, so people generally have been doing a lot of this work manually using uh, UI editors in like PowerShell Studio or Visual Studio. Adam Driscoll just released a new update or version of his WPF editing uh, visual WYSIWYG editor tools inside of the PowerShell tools for Visual Studio, which is pretty awesome. Uh, then there's also modules like Show UI and uh, PS GUI that allow you to do uh, user interfaces from PowerShell in a more PowerShell style, like using actual commandlets and uh, uh, having things set up in a way where it makes more sense, so you don't have to do all the UI construction yourself. Um, we also have some level of automatic UI construction uh, in PowerShell. Uh, show command, uh, people generally familiar with show command, um, like in the ISC, that's that bar on the right side that shows you all the modules and commands and everything. That's generated from PowerShell commandlets. So if you go dig into some of the commands, you'll see fields that are uh, populated based on the parameters to commands and you know possible values, that sort of thing. Um, then you have like out grid view, which is a window that pops up and shows you a list of items and gives you the ability to filter the columns based on the, po the possible values for whatever uh, property the column came from. Um, so, you know, this is sort of the level the, of what we have in PowerShell currently. Uh, and then when you also have third-party tools like Power GUI. Uh, people are generally familiar with Power GUI. Yeah, okay. So there's some, some, people, some people are familiar with it, but it was um, developed by uh, Quest Software, and Kirk Monroe from the PowerShell community was one of the major contributors to that project, but it also gave you, like, a management console uh, generated from PowerShell commandlets, and it also allows you to define custom user interfaces based on like PowerShell scripts, which is pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it's 2017, and we haven't really visited this topic in a while, uh, at least from the perspective of the PowerShell team. So we had some questions. I mean, uh, Kenneth came to me maybe last year sometime, early last year, was asking me about, you know, generating user interfaces from PowerShell modules, because it's a thing that had been tried before in the past, but, you know, never was very good success. I mean, we've got show command and it's it works good, but you know it, it has limitations. Anybody who's tried to use show command to generate a user interface knows that you know it 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 works, but it's not great. Like if you gave that to a user, there would still be some confusion. Um, so we started asking ourselves a question of like, can we simplify PowerShell-based UI for typical needs? I mean, generally, if you're making a UI from within PowerShell you're wanting to show a form to a user so they can fill in some information, which then gets turned into an object that gets sent along into a command somewhere uh, or through the pipeline. Um, so is there a way that we can make a UI system that is more attuned to the needs of PowerShell? Also, can we do a better job of generating UI from metadata? Since PowerShell has a crap load of metadata and all the information about you know, the commandlets themselves, the prop, uh, parameters, um, the help strings, um, just 
so much information, like validation for parameters uh, is also another one. I mean, there's all kinds of information that, we, that can be used to actually generate a user interface that we can make use of. And this is sort of the point. If you read the Monad Manifesto, Jeffrey Snover is basically talking about this in one of the, the points of the Monad Manifesto. The ability to generate user interfaces, management, gener management user interfaces based on PowerShell commandlets. So it's, it was originally a part of the, the vision and design. So something that uh, you know, we have a lot of metadata for that purpose already. Uh, another question is, can we make Jia more visible through UI? So, you know, if you don't know about Jia already, Jia is this uh, feature in PowerShell v5 and above, I believe, which allows you to define uh, roles for users, and they have a very restricted set of commandlets, and even down to like the parameters of the commandlets that you can uh, that the user is allowed to use. So, um, it's not easy to see what commands you have available as a user. I mean, I guess you could type get command, but um, you don't really know until you can get like a visualization of what uh, commands you have available. And especially if you are giving this user interface or if you want to give a user interface to a user behind a, or within a GS session, GIA constrained session, you know, it's, it makes sense to um, you know, only show the commands that are available to them. So um, also there's the question of how do we show UI on Linux and Mac OS? Since now that we're cross-platform, we need to figure that out because WPF is not cross-platform, WIMPforms is not cross-platform. So we have to have some way to enable people to um, do user interfaces on those other platforms as well. So we decided to create a project to try to answer some of these questions. We may not answer them perfectly, but we're going to kind of give it a shot because uh, it seems like we have the raw material available now to, to make this a reality. So Phosphor is a new module, an open source module, that generates cross-platform UI for PowerShell modules. So you basically point it at a uh, PowerShell module or a list of PowerShell modules, and it will generate a user interface that's sort of like an MMC style uh, UI where you have like a first column, which is like the, the modules and the nouns that are available in the system. Uh, and then the middle column being the grid view. If you click on one of the nouns, you'll see the list of items. And then like the right pane, which is all the actions and then the details. Um, so the UI gets ex exposed as either a desktop app or as a website. Uh, we're using HTML-based UI. So uh, this is something that can be shown either in an, an electron shell. So if anybody's used like Slack or Visual Studio Code, these tools are all uh, built using this uh, if you call it a platform called Electron, which basically just gives you a browser window as a desktop application and uh, some desktop level API integrations. So we can make it seem like a desktop app even though it's actually a web interface. And also we can expose this as a website. So we can just you know, show it to you as a web portal. You can expose it to a user or you know, help desk people as, uh, as a web portal. So it you know, has multiple uses. Um, right now, it's currently only a simple proof of concept. And as you'll see in the demo in a little bit, some things aren't working. Uh, it's mainly because I rushed to get something put together for the PowerShell Summit a couple weeks ago. Uh, so part of the work was done last year by an intern who did, the, did a proof of concept of the, the UI. And I've basically taken the existing UI and then retrofitted the service to make it more like a command, like a real module. Uh, so you'll see. It, it's... It will give you the idea of what we're going for, but it's not like currently fully useful. Um, and eventually, we want to convert this into being a simple PowerShell UI framework. And this is not something like WPF where you're going to have full control over everything possible. Really, this is like whatever UI structures that we make to make the module browser portal UI work, we're going to try to allow those to be used um, as a object model from within PowerShell so that you can construct your own sort of custom user interfaces just at a very simple level. So it should allow you to do most of the things you would want to do with WPF if you just want to show like, you know, a list view or maybe a details pane or uh, accept some input from a user. So um, probably only about that level. We're not going to go all the way with a UI framework. And uh, also, also there's uh, lots of potential for other use cases and we'll go through some of them later, but uh, probably some interesting things that um, the community would find useful. So I'm kind of interested in thinking more about those. So um, I'll go ahead and just show a quick demo of what uh, works currently, and then we'll talk more in depth about uh, the rest of the details of the project. OK, so I'm just going to load up the uh, Phosphor module into this session. And since it's not currently shipped on the PowerShell gallery, I'm going to be loading it from within my, uh, my Git repository.
And the only command that's available right now is show module. And if you just run show module all by itself, then it's going to pop up a window. And this is an electron shell window, basically. And you can see that we have this list of modules. I'll go ahead and maximize that. We have a list of modules. And the, uh, the tree on the left-hand pane is all the modules in the system. And if you expand one, you can see the nouns that are available in that module. And you can also search the list. So if I search for process, I can see that uh, there are a few modules that actually have the, the a noun of process in them or a noun containing the word process. If I click the Microsoft PowerShell management module and then click the process noun, then it populates this middle pane with a list of processes from the, from the machine. And this is also searchable. So if I type in Chrome, Okay, that used to work, it doesn't work anymore, like I said. Um, so uh, the idea is that you would be able to click on any of these items and then get details. The details pane is currently not wired up, but um, you can see that the, the we get a list of columns, and this is actually uh, the columns that come from the default column uh, information that is in the, uh, the type format file for the, the process type. So. We're pulling information from within PowerShell about how things should be displayed, and we're using that to, to display um, information in the, in the UI. You can also see that we have the verbs for this noun here. So uh, for process, you have start, stop, debug, wait. Uh, we don't list get here because we already have get sort of implicitly through the, uh, um, through the process list. Um, but if you click on one of these, like click on start, then it gives you the input fields for the commandlet. And uh, even like switch parameters are, are provided, um, and you can type any of this stuff in. Right now, this is really basic. It's not very interesting. But the idea is that we'd be able to use the information for validation on parameters to validate within the UI so that you don't have to go all the way to the server to make sure that your commandlet information is being typed in correctly. Uh, also, for um, commandlets with help, uh, built-in help, we should be able to use get help to pull the parameter documentation for each of the parameters, and they have like a little help icon here where you can click on and see the description for what the, uh, the parameter does. Uh, and for any parameter that has uh, a validate set, you would see the, like a drop down for all the possible values. Um, for a uh, parameter that takes an object of another type, you might see a list that you can allow you to select like a, an object from a list. Um, so there's a lot of things we could do here to make this UI really good for, um, for any type of parameter that would be in a, a PowerShell commandlet. Um, you can also scan through the various parameter sets by clicking these left and right buttons. Personally, I don't really like this approach. Um, what I would prefer to do is to narrow down the fields to only the ones that sort of cause PowerShell to choose between different parameter sets and make it obvious that you, know, you need to fill in one of these things, and then as soon as you start filling in the details for that parameter, then it starts to expand to the rest of the uh, parameters for that parameter set. So uh, definitely there's some room for, um, I wouldn't call it necessarily innovation, but feedback. You, know, like you get some ideas about like, the best way to allow you to select between different parameter sets. Really the idea is that we want to be able to present this UI to a person that knows nothing about PowerShell and for it to be meaningful to them. If you just give them a list of, of fields with no context, they're going to be overwhelmed. So it'd be better to progressively display them as we know sort of what direction they're going in. So uh, definitely need some feedback on that. Um, so there's also the ability to do like a preview. Uh, so you may not have noticed so far, but there's this um, uh, little pane down at the bottom. And as you do things in the UI, we actually write out the, the PowerShell script that would be run for those things. So um, if you are giving this to a person who's not very familiar with PowerShell but may want to be, they could actually go down and see the, the PowerShell commands that would have been run based on what they clicked on in the UI. Um, so it could be a, a teaching tool in a way. But if I type in like a file path here, so like C test, and click PS preview, then it gives me um, this output of start process with dash file path C test. So um, th that's also very basic right now, but uh, eventually, we'll make it so that you know you can see very uh, thorough scripts generated from things, even more complicated things like you know like a wizard where you have like multiple steps in a workflow or something like that. So let's see what else is there. Uh, copy to clipboard is basically the same thing. It just would copy the the script out to the clipboard. So this is pretty basic right now. I mean, not very impressive, um, you, but maybe you can see the potential of what this could be like when we have you know full implementation. Uh, uh, of these ideas. Um, 
really the the goal would be to you know have this be either like a desktop application that could be useful for you or maybe for a user that you know double clicks on an icon on the desktop and it shows this window with your module and none, none of the rest of the modules maybe just one module that you've written sort of developed with this UI generation process in mind uh, that way um, they see a UI that looks like a crafted UI but it really is just generated any questions on that so far? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I can show you the, the web server aspect of it real quick. So if I run show module, and let me just try this with uh, the module parameter. So I'll say I want uh, package management and PowerShell get. So I can say open in browser. And then instead of opening it in a window, it opens it in a browser. And you can see that it's actually hosted on a, on a local port. Um, this could be exposed like through a gateway or something like that. Um, it could also be hosted through IAS, I think. I haven't really like looked into like all the details. But the idea would be that you should be able to host it in a way that you know multiple users could come to it from the outside. And, and you know, it could be a real web portal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you could also like expose that you know, uh, talking to a uh, GIA constrained endpoint so that they only have a few modules or commands available. So you know, it could make it an easy way for them to run specific commands without having access to the whole system. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of potential there. Parameter sets? Yeah, I mean, the best, basically what I was uh, saying, you, you mean like in terms of GIA or just in general? Yeah. So, like many, many parameter sets? Yeah. Um, I haven't looked into that yet, but it would be good to get some, um, some experience from people once people start using this, like to say, hey, this thing doesn't work very well with this module that has, you know, you know like 50 parameter sets or something like that um, in a command. So, yeah. I haven't really thought that, thought that through fully yet. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, sort of saying what now? Yeah, that's a good good question. Um, uh, not yet, but the, I mean, really, really, the question is like, is that information useful to the person using the UI? Um, Maybe, I mean, like if you run a command, maybe there needs to be like a little expander thing that gives you those uh, pieces of output if you need them. But in general, I think that the output given, written in PowerShell to those streams is probably not useful in, in the context of a UI. I could be wrong though. I mean, this is like totally a thing that I, we need feedback on. We need more questions about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, definitely progress needs to be displayed here, uh, if nothing else. But uh, yeah, output could be helpful for that, just to see that there's some activity going on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep, uh, there is a concept of sessions baked into this right now. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit uh, in the in the design details. Any other questions? All right. So um, probably already discussed this a little bit so far, but uh, really, there's a question like, why are we doing this now? Um, well, the the most basic reason would be that for PowerShell Core cross platform, we don't have show command or out grid view. Um, maybe show command isn't the most commonly used thing, but I think a lot of people use out grid view. I mean, it's actually pretty helpful for, uh, you know, digging through some, uh, some items without having to like look through your console output. Um, so because we don't have these things cross platform yet, um, this project is a really good way for us to get that without having to like, you know, get WPF ported over to Linux, which is not going to happen. Um, uh, but also, you know, we can go one step further than those, uh, existing commands and provide like a fully generated management UI so that you could have, you know, a management UI that comes completely from PowerShell commandlets. Now, obviously, we're here because we want to get away from using UIs, but, you know, for some people, it does still have some value. So, um, 
uh, like specifically like to non-PowerShell users, people who don't know how to use the console or don't really understand scripting languages. Um, if they have a UI where they can put some buttons, it's really helpful. You know, like people like help desk admins, where you know you've written some logic for doing things like creating a user or some kind of like internal process thing, and you need to make it available to people like on a self-service basis. They need to have like a UI they can go click a button on to uh, run something that you've written code for, but they don't necessarily need to know how to run the code specifically. And also, we just want to expose more of PowerShell's awesome features as UI. You know, like Gia is a great example of this. I mean, Gia is really useful, but I think that it, people will start to really understand it once you can make a user interface that's generated based on you know what things a user has access to through their Gia configuration. Um, it sort of makes a more compelling case for that. And then plus, it's just like all the metadata that we have built in. I mean, that it's just screaming to be used uh, for this type of purpose. So it's a, it's a really good motivation. So now, how does it work? Um, so right now, the module, yep. Uh -huh. hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it, it's easy to lose sight of that one because it's been so long since we had the original discussions about it. <laughs> We can't disclose that information at this time. <laughs> so, um, so the module is written as a C sharp uh, binary module. Um, it was more expedient to do it this way for now, just because I'm using ASP.NET Core inside of PowerShell. Uh, however, I would prefer to do everything in just pure PowerShell, so that it's easier for the community con to contribute to. And it may still be that we go that way in the future. Um, uh, I think the the idea would be that some of this ASP.NET Core um, integration that I've done could be useful itself as a module that then could be exposed through PowerShell. So basically making a REST service in PowerShell using ASP.NET Core, but with like really simple functions instead of uh, C-sharp code. But for now, it's C-sharp code that hosts ASP.NET Core inside of PowerShell. So it starts up a REST service inside of PowerShell on a separate thread. So when you run show module, I'm actually spawning up a new uh, REST API inside of the process that then can be accessed through the local port of 5001 or whatever it gets configured to be. Um, and if there's only one REST API active in a PowerShell session. So if you, uh, if you run show, show module more than once, it's the same REST API, but a different session gets created. Um, so there's the, the idea of a UI session so that you can have like, if you have two different windows uh, visible with uh, generated UI, they should be independent. So we have to have some way of you know, defining a session so that you can have independent things happening there, uh, independent context for the, the uh, different sessions. Uh, this would also be useful for the case of having multiple users using the same server. You, know, you need to have multiple sessions that don't overlap, that kind of thing. Uh, also, we have uh, HTML and JavaScript-based UI exposes static files. So the way that most JavaScript-based apps are written these days is that you have uh, static HTML files with JavaScript files that pull information from a REST service and then um, add new uh, UI elements inside of the HTML page on demand, basically. So instead of having like a full ASP.NET website where you have like these you know template stuff in the page uh, that gets generated on the server and then spit out to the host or to the client, yeah, to the client, um, we do it all sort of like. The REST service just does the REST service and it serves static files that then call into the REST service and generates all of the user interface. So it makes it pretty easy to um, keep, right? it keeps things more simple and straightforward so that we don't have a lot of moving parts. You know, we have just the UI, you have the service, and you know, those things are pretty independent. Um, so the UI, whenever it spawns, it's gonna make REST requests to the, or sorry, makes requests to the REST service, basically asking it, okay, what am I supposed to be showing here? And then once it gets a response back, then it starts to generate the UI elements and all the stuff that gets displayed on the screen. Um, so right now, yeah, like I mentioned, it supports multiple sessions and you know, multiple windows, et cetera. 
Uh, right now, everything is really sort of targeted to this module browser uh, construct, but eventually we're going to sort of generalize that, but I, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And I guess I'll talk about that now. Uh, so basically, future direction for this project. Um, so aside from just doing what I've shown so far and just taking that to its you know, logical conclusion, um, what else can we do? One thing would be to generalize the UI model so that it can be used more like a framework rather than just you, know, you write a module and then you generate user interface based on that. Uh, but like I mentioned before, we're not going to go overboard and make like a full UI framework because that wouldn't make any sense. Really, it's more just like giving you the raw material to make something similar to what you're seeing right now. Um, based on a UI model that you know, is pretty concise, we can make a PowerShell-based DSL that allows you to just sort of easily script out some user interface and then just sh show it. Um, so that should be pretty, pretty easy, I think. Um, also, potentially supporting multiple front ends. So you could have like native desktop UI. Since right now this has a REST service that anybody can make requests to, uh, theoretically any application could then make requests to that UI and then generate user interface in its own sort of context. So you know, an existing application could then get information from the service and then generate its own UI. And in fact, you don't even need the service. If you have direct access to PowerShell, you can just run a command that gives you the information that you would have gotten from the service, and then you just you know, do it directly. Also, um, I've been thinking about using this as a way to possibly do uh, UI-based extensions for Visual Studio Code. Uh, since right now in the ISC, you have the ability to add UI panes um, to you know, add new functionality, like for instance, the Azure automation add-on is a UI add-on into the ISC, and people like that a lot. To provide a similar user interface um, in VS Code, they would have to write their own extension for VS Code, and they would have to talk to the PowerShell extension somehow, and it would be really complicated. It would be really easy for them to take something like this to um, generate a user, inter user interface that gets displayed as a pane in v VS Code, and then when you, when you do things in that UI, it actually makes requests in the PowerShell to uh, uh, to run those commands. Another thing that we've been looking into that uh, some other independent work has been done inside the company uh, is, is potentially generating user interfaces into Azure Portal. Um, this makes sense because you know there's all this new functionality being added to Azure um, and to other ma you know, management platforms in, uh, in Windows as well. And you have to have UI that's written custom to you know, talk to APIs that you know, run actions. Why can't we just generate a user interface from the PowerShell module for uh, those features and show it in a management UI? I mean, if we could do that in, in uh, <clears throat> the Azure portal to some degree, then it, it could save us the time of actually having to go and make crafted U UIs for everything. Now, it would be good if you could have like a half-crafted yeah. UI and a half-generated UI. So you have some parts that are you know, done by a designer, they look nice, they make sense. But then for all the rest of the stuff that you know is not as high value as like the mainline scenarios, you could have generated user interface that um, fulfills those needs. So it's something that we'll be looking into probably later for Phosphor itself. I mean, we're really focused on like you know our own interface and not really any kind of large scale uh, integration at this point. <clears throat> um, another interesting thing that we could possibly do is to have like an interactive notebook or dashboard. Uh, has anybody seen uh, Jupyter um, or like the R uh, data science tools? Yeah, so the idea there is that you should have a way to interactively investigate um, or I guess interactively ask questions on a data set. So like in PowerShell, if you're trying to investigate an issue in your environment and you're running a bunch of commands and you know, looking at output, instead of just reading a list of output, you might want to actually see like a chart or a graph. Um, and you may actually want to kind of go in phases and you know, make a chart for, for one thing and then still have it there while then you start investigating more, uh, you know, like you filter the list or you, you know, sort it or do something like that and you want to see more charts that <clears throat> show information uh, based on your investigation. Uh, so I'm having this idea that maybe we could have like an interactive window that you could pop up from PowerShell where you're typing commands into PowerShell, but then you can send output to that window in the form of a chart or a table or anything like that. And then you can have this persistent session where you can keep adding more things to it. So I um, haven't fully visualized what that could be yet, but I think that there's something there. So I'm hoping to do some prototyping on that maybe you know, later this year or maybe sooner if other people want to help. Um, the same thing for like a dashboard. 
you could easily generate a dashboard that has you know charts based on real time information. Um, one thing I want to do in the UI model is have uh, certain pieces of data that can be refreshed. So like on an interval, like five seconds or a minute, you can refresh some piece of UI like grid view or a chart. So um, that would be really useful for like a dashboard. You could really easily just pop up dashboard from within PowerShell. You could give you know someone else in your team just like a script or a module that shows dashboard and um, it, it might be really useful for those people. And lastly, um, now that we are cross-platform, we don't have a help viewer like we have in uh, Windows PowerShell. So um, if you type get help, I think dash show window, it pops up a window that actually gives you the, uh, the help rendered in a kind of a text format, but it's, it seems kind of nice. I believe it's searchable also. Uh, we don't have an analog for that for cross-platform. Um, so this is a way that we could potentially get that, especially if we're you know, moving more toward markdown-based help, it'd be really easy to render a nice looking, you know, help viewer with you know markdown based help um, we could also do help editing through the same ui where you could you know click edit and it would give you an editor so you could change the help and then save it and you know make that part of your development process for your own modules like editing your about uh, about help file or your uh, comment based help maybe the markdown file that we could turn into comment based help but uh, it it seems interesting that uh, to, to provide the capability, but you know we'll see if it actually uh, if it actually happens. But part of the reason for telling you about all these things is to sort of give you ideas, so that if you're interested, you can file issues on the on the GitHub repo, and we can talk about it some more. So just a brief overview of what I think a UI model could be. Um, not that we really have anything for this yet, but based on sort of the high level things that I know that we'll need for uh, in a, a management UI that's generated. We might need these things. So like a basic layout. So being able to you know, split the screen into columns or into horizontal rows um, and doing it in a way where you, know, you don't need to have like really tight control over everything. You just need to like, you know, partition the space so that you can show different pieces of UI in different places. Uh, also grid views. So just like out grid view, we need one of those that has you know, filtering and sorting capabilities by, de by default. Um, tree views, so uh, this is helpful for anything like a, a PS drive uh, where you want to show like maybe register keys or uh, anything else that's expressed as a, as a PowerShell provider. Um, panels for details or for um, filling in uh, values, so like if you want to show the user uh, UI based on like a command, just, just a simple box that has some fields, uh, we need to have a way to express that. Commands, which is basically um, like a button you can click to run something. So it would be like a verb uh, for a PowerShell noun. And uh, maybe charts and graphs, um, if there's a good way to express that. I'm working on a spec draft for this right now that I'll be uh, sending as a PR to the Phosphor repo and uh, probably send it out pretty soon, I don't know, within the next few weeks. And would definitely love to get feedback from people of if there's things that they think they might need that aren't really listed in this, um, be, be useful to get some feedback on that. So uh, I, I really want to get more people involved in the open source projects that I work on. Um, I feel like I haven't done a good enough job uh, in trying to encourage people and like really help people get started. Um, this is another opportunity where we're starting at like zero, basically, to make something new. So if you want to get involved in a PowerShell project and um, you haven't really found a good one yet, and this one seems interesting to you, definitely talk to me because I want to start helping people get on board, you know, contributing to our open source projects. Um, this is a community driven project. We're going to do things based on what you guys tell us to do in the GitHub issues and especially whatever you guys, you know, want to try to submit as pull requests, you know, we're definitely going to consider putting that stuff in. So uh, I really encourage you to, you know, look into it and, you know, see if there's anything interesting there that you might want to do. Uh, we have a GitHub repo that's open right now. It's uh, under the, the PowerShell GitHub organization, under the Phosphor repo. Um, the, there's some instructions there on how to build the code. Uh, I think someone here just filed an issue very recently, like an hour ago or less, uh, saying that the instructions don't work. Yeah, they don't. Um, the build script is broken because I just like half-assed it and checked it in a, a few days ago. But um, the manual installation steps, I think, do work. So if you go and all the steps, you should be able to compile the code and get it to run locally. Uh, I'll be working on that to make it way easier so that all you got to do is just clone the repo and uh, install Node.js and then everything else is automated. So 
uh, that that will all get resolved in the very near future. Um, also, we've got the uh, Phosphor channel on the PowerShell community Slack. So if you're not a member of this uh, Slack community, you should definitely join because there's a lot of conversations that go on there and people are really helpful. Um, uh, if you have issues about PowerShell or anything, people are always there to answer questions. Uh, we talk about this project in this channel, but there's also the editor's channel where I'm talking about you know, VS Code and uh, lots of other really great channels. So you should definitely join that uh, Slack community. Um, currently, we have a, a few contributors who jumped in immediately on this stuff. Uh, Kirk Monroe basically, you know, was emailing me constantly over the last year, like trying to get involved and, and try to help out. Uh, he's helped me figure out sort of the, the PowerShell metadata side of things. And since he has a lot of background in UI from doing the uh, Power GUI project, uh, he's got a lot of really good insights and information about how to, to make some of this happen. We also have uh, Michael Willis who um, is a really talented uh, JavaScript UI developer, and he's jumped in to, to help with converting the current uh, portal that we have, which is written in Angular 2, to a simpler UI framework called Vue.js. Um, the motivation there is just to make it easier for people to contribute to the UI code, because you know Angular 2 is kind of like, well, this, it, yeah, it's, it's with TypeScript, which I think is great, but I think it's like, Enterprisey, it's too enterprisey. It's like it's overly designed. I think it's you know it's kind of a bad thing. It's confusing. So I would prefer to have something simpler. And uh, Michael's helping to get that uh, that effort going. Also, uh, Michael T. Lombardi is helping with uh, documentation. I mean, he's really sort of be beating the drum on documentation in the community right now, and uh, he's offered to help get the documentation stuff going. But also, like I said, I really want you guys to uh, think about contributing uh, to the project. And uh, if you jump onto the Slack and or onto the GitHub repo, we'll, we'll get you started for sure. So uh, there are specific areas where you can try to contribute. And the first one is ideas. You know, anything you can think of that, you know, would be interesting to you or maybe useful, like some scenario that you really wish you had a, a you know, a UI that you could give to somebody for, um, please file issues for those because I would love to hear them. Um, we need a lot of work done on the UI front end. You know, like a lot of the things I mentioned that aren't there right now, like you know, showing help for parameters or uh, field validation, uh, all this kind of thing. Uh, we need to do a lot of work there. So it'd be good to have people jump in on those things if you're interested in writing TypeScript or JavaScript, that kind of thing. Um, also, the PowerShell metadata side of things. You know, we need to sort of dig into the information that PowerShell gives us on commands and then turn that into information that can be used in the UI to uh, display uh, information. So um, there's a lot of work to be done there as well, because right now it's very, very basic. Um, we need more commandlets. I mean, we need to implement things like outgrid view, show commands, and anything else that would be useful for uh, this module. Um, also, GIA support. Right now, I don't do anything special for GIA. Um, haven't really tried to do anything yet, but um, I think that it would be a really easy way for someone to contribute if they wanted to give some sample GIA configurations uh, or just validating scenarios, just like trying it uh, with a GIA constrained endpoint and seeing what works or what doesn't work and just letting us know. Um, that, that would be really helpful for us to, to get that stuff online. And just generally feedback on the UI model or just you know the, the general structure of things that you've seen so far. I mean, any of that's really, uh, really helpful. So, uh, like I said, it's still really early days on the project, but uh, I expect to have an initial release in about two to three months, uh, maybe sooner if more people get involved. I mean, I'm kind of splitting my time between too many projects right now, so uh, I don't have a lot of dedicated time I can spend on this right now, but hopefully uh, in the next couple months I'll, I'll have more time for that. But uh, we really need your input to help set the direction for the project. Um, it's like, for me, Feedback is king. Like I, I really need feedback to know where to, to spend my time, just to, to know what is most important. So I really appreciate hearing uh, people's contact, uh, comments and feedback and all that kind of thing. And uh, please contact me on twi uh, Twitter or GitHub if you are interested in contributing code or you're just interested in the project in general or just want to ask me a question. If you've talked to me on Twitter or GitHub before and I haven't met you face to face, also come and, and talk to me because I want to meet everybody that I, I've interacted with online because it's good to put names to faces and you know develop those relationships. So definitely come up and, and chat at any of the times we have. Yeah, like tonight at the at the zoo or whatever. Um, so uh, leaving it open now for questions. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah, that's one thing that isn't working currently, but um, yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Yeah, minor detail, it doesn't run code yet. Um, it, it, the previous prototype we had did actually run the code, so what it did was you fill in all the details for uh, the parameters, and then it, um, it will generate the actual PowerShell script to run, and we'll just run it. So uh, we're just running it in, in, the, in the run space attached to the session. So for each session, we're, for, a, for like calling show module, and it's, when it pops up a window, we have a run space assigned to that session so that we can run things in that session without disturbing the original session that you run the, ran the command from. Uh, in, a, in a situation like uh, out grid view, where you, you want it to, to stop the pipeline at that point and then allow you to do something and then send it on through the pipeline, we just reuse the same run space. Uh, that currently isn't, isn't implemented right now, but I have a branch where that's working. So, But yeah, in general, we're just running script against a run space. That's a great question. Yeah, I haven't thought about that yet. It's, it's likely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe if there was a way to say, you know, for the, the collection that comes into the command, yeah, or just like, you know, generate a UI based on some input object that has all the fields, and then for, for that thing, you could run that uh, command um, whenever, uh, for each object that goes to the pipeline, whatever the user typed in gets run on those. It's, it's possible, yeah. It's definitely good to think about that, though, because I haven't thought about that one yet. Yep. What's the step and make it making it really easy for you? So, yeah, good work. <laughs> Yep. Uh, it, yeah, that needs to be determined. I mean, like right now, yes, because the run space is just under the current user's uh, uh, credentials. But if we create a run space using um, a GIA credential, then it would be under that user's context. So uh, we need to, to get that implemented uh, and sort of figure out how that's going to look. But. I'm pretty certain that you know you'll have the the ability to choose whenever you, if you are configuring this to be run as a portal, then you should be able to choose say run it as this user, not as me, you know that kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, so um, credentials are always a difficult issue in web portals. And I had this issue in, in the PowerShell extension where if, if the user did something in uh, their script that caused get credential to get called or a PS credential parameter to, to be prompted, um, you would have to take the credential in the HTML-based UI and somehow magically make sure it gets to PowerShell without being intercepted. Um, I never found a good way to do that because it's not easy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know how we're going to solve that problem right now. Because uh, really, yeah, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, it, that one's going to be tough. I need to talk to Lee Holmes and see what he thinks. But uh, I don't know if there's a really good solution for that. I mean, it may be that you need to have some kind of store credentials that you can refer to uh, and not actually have to type them in directly in the UI. Mm. 
Yeah, we just need like a general credential store. Right, yep. Yeah, we could definitely try to add something like that for this. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Any other questions? Cool. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, no problem. So you're basically exposing commandlets through a REST service? Yeah. 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 That's. Right. Yeah, I'm always looking for ways to decompose things into reusable components. So that, that could be an interesting thing to try here. Uh, I would have to look and see what we have done in the past and make sure that, uh, you know, that, that can't be already used for it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good point. I think other people have asked for that as well, being able to generate a REST API from, uh, from PowerShell commandlets. Any other thoughts or questions? Cool, well I really appreciate your time. Uh, definitely, like I said, hit me up on Twitter or GitHub if you have any comments or feedback or you think this is a stupid idea and wanna yell at me. I'm happy to hear it. So uh, thanks a lot.